Hello everybody, let's take a look at the specification for the CD4033 and this is a counter and seven segment decoder in one package. I'll just scroll down to the diagram of the 4033. So previously we had discussed the 4026 version of this chip. Uh, the two are somewhat interchangeable, the pinouts are very similar. Now for the 4033, its main feature is that it has ripple blanking, so we'll talk about that. So the way this chip works is if you put one clock pulse in, then it lights up the right seven segment elements to give you a one on the display, and if you put another clock pulse in, it lights them up to give you a two on the display, and so on. Now there's some control pins here, the clock inhibit, we don't really need that, so we'll just tie that off. The reset, which just resets the counter right back to zero. A lamp test, uh, this lights up all of the segments in your seven segment display so that you can check and make sure that things are connected up properly. There's a carry out pin, so this is used when we're using multiple stages. So we're going to build a counter that counts from 0 to 999 so we'll need three of these chips basically once this chip has counted to 9 and we give it one more clock pulse it resets back to 0 and it sends a pulse out of the carry out which goes to the next chip in the sequence so we'll show you that on the circuit diagram and then there's ripple blanking in and ripple blanking out and then we'll also show you this on the circuit diagram Essentially what this allows you to do is to keep the display blank when it's not in use. So if you imagine a, a display with three seven segment displays and uh, you start counting one, two, three, four and counting up, then you don't necessarily want the tens display or the hundreds display to be showing a zero. So this allows you to blank them out until they're needed. Let's start by taking a look at the circuit diagram. One of the first things to notice is that we have three ICs and three displays because we're going to be counting from 0 to 999 we need three displays. The first one is the ones, then the tens, and then the hundreds. So when you build this you want to build it with this display on the right, this one in the middle, and this on the left in order that it looks correct. Over here we have three buttons. We have the clock button, so every time we press this, we'll send a clock pulse into the clock pin of the first IC. This IC will count from 0 to 9. Once it reaches 9, it'll roll over back to 0. And when it does that, it'll send a pulse out of the carry out. And this comes down to the clock in of the next IC. So when we get to 10, this will be displaying a zero and this will have received its first clock pulse and it will display a one which is correct which is 10 and then this will start counting up again until it gets to 19 and as it rolls over it'll send another carry out to the clock and this will display a two so we'll we'll demonstrate this later and the same the same system works with the hundreds so once this gets to nine and rolls over so we'll have a 9 here and a 9 here at 99. Once they roll over, this will receive a 1. Other things to notice are that we have a capacitor on the, on the clock pin. So this is just to eliminate switch bounce. We have a switch for the lamp test. So when we press this button, it's connected to the lamp test pins of each IC. And it will turn on all of the segments of all of the displays. And that's just for checking that you have things correctly wired up. If we press the reset button, this will reset all of the counters to zero. Um, another part of this that we want to discuss is the, 
the ripple blanking in and out. So you'll notice on the on the third I see here that the ripple blanking in pin is tied to ground. The ripple blanking out goes back to the second I see. So the way this works is that when these control pins are used, when the IC is seeing no clock pulses, so it's basically at zero, it should be displaying a zero on the on the display, it blanks the display. And the reason that this these are connected together is that you can imagine when this reaches one, so we're getting into the hundreds count. You don't want to blank a zero on the center here because otherwise you would let's let's assume that you're at a count of 100 you would have a one here you would have nothing displayed here and you would have a zero displayed here so basically this I I see is telling this one hey I'm at a hundred so even if you see zero stay turned on okay so something else we want to take a look at here and I'll just bring this in is the pin out of the seven segment displays so here it is here so basically when you have this display on the table in front of you and it's the right way around the bottom left is the the first pin and you count anti-clockwise around like this so this would be a a fairly standard pin out for these types of uh, displays Obviously, there'll be there'll be some kinds that don't follow this number system, or they don't follow this number system, I should say. But um, in most cases, it's fairly standard. Notice that there's two ground pins, three and eight. <clears throat> and in our case, we won't we won't be using the decimal point. We'll leave that pin disconnected. Okay, so let's go take a look at the build. Um, I'm using a um, a breadboard which I had a previous seven segment build on so uh, you'll see that I've already got some of the circuit built but uh, there was quite a lot to do still Okay, here we go with the demonstration, and you can see right now that the display on the right is lit up only, and the other two displays, the tens and the hundreds, are not. So this is the ripple blanking effect. So I'm going to start clocking in pulses, and you can see that this is starting to count up. Now we get to nine. Now when we get to the next clock pulse, this is going to go to zero, and this is going to light up with a one, and there it goes which is as it should be. If we keep counting up, we'll see the same effect, and now this is going to light up with a 2, and so on. So I'm going to quickly um, count this up to 100, and you'll see that uh, it works with the 100s as well. And right now the 100s display is blanked until we get to 999. And when we roll over again, so both dis both of these displays are going to roll over to zero, and we're going to get a one on the hundreds display. And there we go, it worked. Now this button here is the reset button. So when I press this, it will reset all the counters to zero. So I'll press that, and there we go, everything's gone back to zero. And this button over here is the lamp test button. So when I press this, we should have eights in all displays, all segments lit up, and we do, so that's working as well. So that brings the, uh, the demonstration of the circuit working to an end. It's kind of nice because it, it uh, blanks out the displays that are not being used when you're counting up on low numbers. And uh, that's it. Okay, see you next time, and thanks for attending this presentation.